Just ahead on Tempo in Depth, bullying has changed since I was a kid, and it seems to be everywhere these days. Reports rank bullying as the most common form of violence in our society. More than three million kids are bullied each and every year. It makes them more likely to suffer from depression and anxiety and increases their risks to skip school or drop out. So how can we recognize the warning signs? And what can we do to stop it? We'll hear from local experts. Plus, see what's working in schools right now on Tempo in Depth as we show you and your kids how to stand up and be counted. The people of Air Products feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home. You're safe at home at Luther Crest, a Diacon senior living community in Allentown. Our mission is to offer premier accommodations and services so residents can cultivate a healthy and fulfilling retirement. At Luther Crest, we offer independent living apartments and cottages, personal care, skilled nursing, rehabilitative services, and more. Plus, the Luther Crest team strives to provide each person family-like support. You might say it's like a home run. Luther Crest. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. Well, we'd like to welcome students from Nichman and East Hills Middle Schools in Bethlehem to our studio audience today for our special look at bullying. You know, surveys find that one in five high school students have experienced bullying. 16% have been cyberbullied. It's unwanted, aggressive, and usually about power. Bullying takes several forms. It's physical, verbal, and even social, like excluding someone or spreading rumors about someone. In girls, many call that social bullying, relational aggression. And experts say even though it's not physical, it leaves serious and lasting consequences, including depression, eating disorders, and in worst case, suicide. Tempo in Depth's Laura McHugh shares how one young woman survived bullying and how one local school aims to empower the girls involved. Every day is so wonderful Then suddenly it's hard to breathe During the toughest times in her life, Demi DeJesse turned to music. Because I am beautiful no matter what they say Yes, words can bring me because without that, I wouldn't, I feel like I wouldn't be here. It gave me like motivation, push, drive, like it helped me get my emotions out. When I was angry, I would just sing. When I'm sad, I just sing. Instead of crying, I sing. Singing and writing music saved me from the constant bullying that started in seventh grade when other girls called her names, like fat and ugly. As it was constant, that's when it started getting to me. I was like, am I really like that? Like, why are you always calling me that, you know? Girls would follow her as she walked home from school. I'd just be talking to my dad on the phone and they would be following me throwing rocks at me. Prank calls, rude comments online, every day delivered a new assault on Demi's self-esteem. It affected me to the point where I was self-harming myself because of these people, you know? Like that's, I don't know, I feel like that's as low as you can go. Because in the end I wanted to hurt them, but I was blaming me. Then I just feel like my senior year I had enough. I was like... <laughs> I'm done, you know? Like, should I give up now? So, and I almost did. So now I want you guys to think about a recent challenge that you've had where you took on something that was really difficult. Many of the girls in this room can sympathize with Demi. I know how hard of a time it is to be in middle school. I think that's the hardest time in someone's life. Um, and so knowing that girls are constantly getting bullied, I knew that this would be a very successful club and one that would really impact a lot of students. In 2009, Dana Klein, now a sophomore at Muhlenberg College, helped start Club Ophelia at Northampton Middle School. When a bully gets the reaction that they want from someone that they are picking on, it feeds them, feeds them, makes them bigger, makes them stronger, makes them want to do it over and over and over again. And we're here today to shut it down, right? And part of the th one of the things we can do about that is trying to be positive and looking for the strength in people 
Run locally by Valley Youth House, the weekly after-school program pairs middle school girls who have been involved in bullying with high school mentors. Club Ophelia is probably one of the biggest successes that we have here at the middle school. It's to empower the bully, the uh, victim, and the bystanders on how to create and how to manage appropriate social relationships. Target's middle school. Middle school is really the time that we start to see kind of the mean girl behavior begin to surface. It's about empowering girls in the middle to kind of speak up to the bullies, the queen bee and the wannabe, and really to learn that all the girls in the middle really have the power and the strength to kind of stand up against that. To learn more, I sat down with three of the girls in Club Ophelia. Of the three of you, who's been bullied by a show of hands? Three of you. I think it happens and it looks like that people are in cliques and they're in like the popular crowd, if you want to call it. It's about the clothes, the hair, everything. It's about the bling. <laughs> if you don't wear the right stuff or don't talk the same way or or stuff like that, then you, you like they just think it's they just think it's funny that you don't appear the same way as they do and normally that leads to that leads to bullying. Through activities in the club, the girls have gained confidence plus some positive female friends. It helped me realize that bullies can't bring me down. Sometimes I feel alone that nobody really cares and sometimes I feel like um, I'm the only one that's going through this, but I'm not. And then I have Club Ophelia to tell me that I'm not the only one going through all of this, that I'm, I'm one of many. <laughs> I think it helps because seeing high school girls and knowing that they got through it and they were able to still succeed even when getting bullied, I think it gives the middle school girls that bit of hope that they know that they can succeed as well and to not let anyone stand in the way of achieving their dreams. Now 18 years old, in college, and in a great relationship with her boyfriend, Demi echoes that message. I want them to know that they're never alone, because that's what my biggest thing. I always felt like I was alone, no one understood my pain or anything, but there's always people out there who understand. You just have to find those right people. Demi encourages victims to stay positive, and no matter what, to never blame themselves. They're perfect. They're fine just the way they are, and they don't have to change for anyone or try and be someone else. Cause I am beautiful in every single way. Yes, words can bring you down. For Tempo In Depth, I'm Laura McHugh reporting. So don't you bring me down, oh, do I? Thanks so much, Laura. Well, we're going to continue our conversation with a special guest joining me in the studio right now. It's Trisha Welly, the Student Services Coordinator at Allentown School District. Trisha, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Help us understand, just watching that story, my heart goes out to them, and I remember what it was like being in middle school when a bully picked on me. But I think it's so much worse today with social media and everything else. How do we help empower the students? Um, I, I think it's important to understand that, that at the very basis of all of this, we have a very vulnerable population being victimized. And I think what we need to do is, as adults, all adults, um, whether bullying is happening in your home with your child, whether it's happening in a school, whether it's happening in your neighborhood, whether you operate a corner store and it's happening in the aisles of your store, we need to stand up and we need to um, represent this vulnerable population. We need to put a stop to it. We need to send a clear message that it is not to be tolerated, it will not be tolerated. <clears throat> you know, we like to kind of call the show Stand Up and Be Counted, mm -hmm. and it's what you just said. You know, there are, bullying is happening, but whether you're a, a parent, a store owner, an educator, you can stand up. But the students can stand up, too. What about, I remember, I love sharing the story when I was in eighth grade and being bullied, and I was scared to death to tell everyone, because that's the first thing that they do, right. and it was my very best friend who went to the principal and got me some help. Right. I was too afraid. Absolutely. You know, that's the kind of friend that we all want. And I think we all want to be. How do we encourage our students in school to be that kind of person, to stand up and be counted and, and help someone in need? 
It starts with every child, and it starts with um, de helping your children develop empathy. And that means just understanding a situation from another person's perspective. So, you know, no matter what it is, no matter what the situation is that's occurring, it doesn't have to be a bullying situation, just asking, how do you think that person feels? How would you feel if that if you were in that situation, to try to get kids thinking beyond just their own perspective, but to the perspective of others. Um, that's one way, and that's something that's very important. It's one of the things that we look at when we survey, for instance, um, climate in a, in a school, a community, and, and how um, students are responding in terms of bullying behavior. Um, we look at the level of empathy that we're seeing. Um, I think beyond that, we want we want students to, they don't know what to do in response to bullying. They need to be given specific skills. There are things you can do in a bullying situation that simply distract from what's happening and may avert um, that bullying behavior. Um, you Certainly, we, we suggest that they tell an adult. And if the adult they tell does not do something about it, then they should tell another adult, and they should tell the second adult that they've already told someone who didn't do something That's about right. it. That's right. Right? <laughs> right out the adult that didn't do anything Absolutely. to help you. You know, you have to let people know that there are, we need people to be accountable. And, you know, schools are required by legislation to have policy that addresses bullying and cyberbullying. And part of that is also to have a procedure for how um, bullying is reported, by students, by staff, and um, you know what that means for that student. And, and students have to be informed of that procedure. Right. I love that program in Northampton for girls to, to empower them. Absolutely. And there are things like that happening in schools all over our region. What else if a student, you know, it's not usually the most outgoing student that gets bullied. It's about power. The bully is trying to show power, and sometimes it's the students who are a little more quiet that get the most picked on. It's, if, if you look at, at uh, there's a lot of research being done in the issue of bullying, and, and there are a lot of reports coming out in terms of where you see bullying. But what we know is that um, the students who are being bullied are students who, um, for instance, if they're boys, they're smaller than their peers, for instance, at a certain age. If they're girls, um, it's exactly the opposite. They may be more physically mature than their peers. Um, children who are observed by their peer group to be different in any way, and I'm talking about food allergies, um, special education needs, um, obesity, um, e lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning youth, um, anything that is perceived to be different. And so when we think about middle school and all of these people saying middle school, it seems to be so much worse. Well, it does peak in middle school. But developmentally, we also have kids in middle school who spend a whole lot of their time observing where they're at, where their peer group's at, and how they stack up. And that whole dynamic what that's going on, it's, it's developmental. It's so sad. It's a developmental stage, and we have to be prepared as adults to help them through the development in healthy ways um, and, and not Patricia, in more accepting Patricia, before we run out of time, I know there's a lot of different philosophies about how to deal with bullying. And one that's a little more controversial is sort of a, a confrontation, putting the bully and the victim in the same room at the same time. We're going to have a story talk about that in a little bit, but that's a concern for you and help people understand why that's not your most preferred way of dealing with bullying. Um, when we talk about bullying behavior, we are talking about someone who's being victimized. Um, we're talking about not a disagreement. It's, it's, if, if, if someone's bullying someone else, it's not because they have a difference of opinion. It's not because they're looking at things in a different way. If someone's bullying someone else, it's because they want to exert power and control over that individual. They may actually derive satisfaction from the suffering of that individual. That's not a conflict. That's a victimization. And so, and so that way. I don't think that's the first step in resolving behavior. I think a lot of work has to be done to empower the person who's being victimized and to build some empathy 
in the person who's doing that bullying. Patricia, we're out of time. I'm okay. so sorry. But I understand and appreciate you sharing this information from the Allentown School District. Okay. Well, you know what? Most people can remember someone who bullied others at school when they were growing up. The bully causes a lot of damage to their victims and themselves. School administrators usually deliver swift punishment to bullies, but that approach alone hasn't seemed to diminish the problem. And that's because pure punishment doesn't seem to always bring the offender and the victim together to repair the harm. In some people's opinion, that's the way to do it. Well, a new approach does just that. It's called restorative practices, and it's rather controversial. It's about restoring community and holding offenders accountable. Here's Tempo in Depth's Grover Silcox with more. Students who bully others may face punishment and regret the consequences. But those who face their victims often regret the harm they've caused as well. I feel bad because I don't really know you. When students do wrong, punishment alone doesn't necessarily make things right. In the old paradigm, the harm was sort of uh, addressed, okay, and then more harm was placed on the offender. Many schools now use an approach called restorative practices, developed by Ted and Susan Wachtel of the International Institute for Restorative Practices in Bethlehem. With this approach, wrongdoer and victim meet in a circle or conference to repair the damage. When we're responding to a bullying situation, absolutely, that uh, uh, wrongdoer needs to be able to hear what the victim needs. They need apology, absolutely. They need to know it's not going to happen again. Victims need to hear from the offender. They also need restitution. Now the question is, how are you going to fix it? That if we see something happen happening like this again, that we try and stop it. Sometimes it's as simple as, um, let's connect and get to know one another, all right? Or when I see in the hallway, I want to be able to say hello to you and you to me. Or maybe it is some distance because maybe the effect was deeper on the victim. Restorative practices have reduced detentions and suspensions at Liberty and other schools nationwide and beyond. People have the misconception that if you utilize restorative practices, that means you've thrown out all discipline. And people until they really get an understanding of what it's about, they'll understand the two things actually work well together. Harrison Bailey III, principal of Liberty High School in Bethlehem, sees restorative practices as effective in dealing with problem behavior and as a proactive measure for building positive relationships which prevent behavior problems before they begin. Today we're going to talk about um, some of the challenges that we're facing. On this day, biology teacher Ted Schaefer has 11th and 12th graders in his Pennsylvania wildlife class form a circle to discuss their personal challenges. The biggest challenge is probably just to stop procrastinating with, <laughs> with everything. <laughs> yeah, my biggest challenge this week, I guess, would be I have a soccer tournament on Sunday, and it's like all day. I have three job interviews this week, so my biggest challenge is hopefully getting one of those jobs. Schaefer uses the circle for sharing mutual challenges. As you share something about either the class material or the struggles that you're going through, people can see you as a person, and I think that helps a lot against the stereotypes which lead to bullying. You learn a lot about like what your, what your peers go through and how you can relate to them. In Jamie Halper's 10th grade health class, the circle revolves around community and getting along. Who would like to start first? We're just really different from each other, so you're not going to have, like, the best, like, everyone agreeing with each other. Bullying has played, like, a big part in our community, and especially, like, in our school. It's like people are, like, scared to be themselves. These students voice their feelings openly and candidly. Once people really see how much words can affect a person and break them down, they should at least get a little bit of insight that they should stop bullying, they should stop judging people. There's always going to be bullying, drugs, alcohol fights. There's actually no way to stop it completely, but there might be ways to slow it down. I guess you have to start from the beginning, like with the little kids and teach them, and then middle school and high school. From out of the circle come feelings, cares, worries, anger, and ideas shared in a safe, organized environment. We utilize a process um, that um, uh, 
uh, very much includes everyone. Everyone has a voice. It means that we all have a stake in it um, and, and we all have a responsibility um, to, to be involved in that process. One of the best ways to deter bullying is to build community. And how do you build community? It's by being real with each other, uh, finding commonalities, um, um, getting connected. That's how you build better schools and the world around them. For Tempo and Depth, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thanks so much, Grover. Well, joining me now are Mike Taubert and his son, Michael. Michael goes to Nazareth High School, and when he was confronted by bullies, found an unconventional way to stand up. Michael, thanks so much for being with us, both of Mike and Michael. We appreciate your time. You're a senior at Nazareth High School. Tell us a little bit about, take us back a couple of years, and describe yourself for us. Uh, so, I'm a senior at Nazareth High School. Uh, I love taking history classes. Those are my favorite things. And uh, uh, two years ago, I started mixed martial arts. Now that's the interesting story, Michael, because how did he start? Well, so he had a uh, little bit of a tough time with some anger problems, and in February a few years ago, we got him into the program and up front with his sensei, he laid it out right up front, hey, I've got anger problems, uh, i got self-esteem problems, he was having problems in school, and so I said, great, find yourself a program, let's get enrolled. Okay, so that was step one. You started taking mixed martial arts. Step two, something interesting happened at school. Tell us the story. So, well, so, so I'm just going to jump in here real quick. I, I think this is uh, a, a very interesting story. He comes home one day and says, Dad, I had an event at school. And Michael, why don't you tell him how it happened? An event. <laughs> it's interesting. So it was, it was maybe five minutes before school was up, and I was waiting for my friend in the wrestling room. We were going to grapple a little bit. He was a wrestler beforehand. Before the, he came, though, two two other wrestlers came up. One was like an instigator, I guess, if you want to call him that. And just were they bigger than you? Everyone's bigger than me. Oh, I'm not too big. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and you know, his friend, he was a little bigger too. He's probably like a hundred eighty pound dude, big guy. And um, I don't know. They were just they were just bullying me, I guess. They were just rough, you know, horsing around. And you know, I they were like, all right, so pushing me around and stuff. So I said, all right, how about this? How about I bet you $10 that you can't do this to me anymore if I fed back? So you, you, you threw down a $10 bet yeah. that, that you could stand up for yourself. Yeah. Take us to the next step. We're dying so to know. He, he was a wrestler, so he goes, all right. So he takes me to the ground, and I put him in a choke because that's one of the things I'm trained to do. So I put him in a choke, and he taps me. He says, like, he's done. And the other guy says, well, I said, well, that wasn't fair. He used different words, but I'm not going to say it. And so he said, all right, well, take your best shot. So I lay my chin out for him, and he hits me. And I go, all right, my turn. And I kick him in the side of the head. And you do one of those roundhouse kicks? Yeah, one of those roundhouse kicks. And I kick him in the side of the head, and he falls down, you know, grasping his ear, because that's where I hit him. And that was the end of it. There was no more bullying after that? No, people don't do anything to me anymore. You stood up for yourself. You had a little more confidence from some training. You know, Dad, what did you think, though, when he came home and told you about the event? Well, so the first thing I said is, son, I think we need to have a talk about the gambling problem. <laughs> but, but high five, number one, for taking the event down to a manageable level. And number two, for, you know, putting a bully in his place. I think his training over Tiger Showman gave him the self-esteem to where he could recognize the situation, mitigate it, take it down to a level that was manageable, and move forward. And I think that's what I'm most proud of is through that training, he's got the self-esteem to stand up for himself. I think that's the big problem we see in schools today. Most of the kids, they don't have that self-esteem. They get bullied. They cower. They look for help. If they have enough self-esteem to look for help, they usually don't get help for whatever reason. And uh, so here we have an incident that uh, A, he was able to stand up for himself, take it to a level that was approachable, and mitigated the problem. So there's been no bullying since that incident. I bet that flew through the school like nobody's business. Either that or they were so quiet that they pr might not have wanted to share it they because they got beat. About it. They were pretty quiet about it. I mean, they were big kids. They were, you know, wrestlers. They were known, I guess, and, you know. What do you see? Do you see much bullying happen in school? I see it, but not physically. You it's know, a lot like of it's, it's, verbal or cyber. Yeah, it, you know, in the movies, you know, back in the day it was very physical, but now I see it's through, you know, the social networks and all that. Michael, before Mike, sorry, 
before we run out of time, what's kind of your last word to parents? Well, I think uh, parents should take an active role in making sure their kids have self good, strong self-esteem. And I think we found a good way to do that, and that's through mixed martial arts. Uh, it may not be for everyone, but we see it work, and we see it work very well. So if you can build that self-esteem in your child, make sure he's able to come forward, make sure he's able to take situations at hand, I think it takes big steps moving forward. Mike Talbert. And your senior in high school son, Michael, congratulations. Thank you so much, and good luck with college. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, for more information on this topic, we'd like to leave you with some additional resources. At StopBullying.gov, parents can find tips to prevent and respond to bullying. Click on the photo marked Kids and Your Children. You can watch videos and play games to learn how to deal with bullying. Next, visit the National Crime Prevention Council's website at ncpc.org and click on Resources under Bullying. You'll find information to help prevent this serious issue. Finally, check out pbskids.org backslash It's My Life and click on Friends. This website has great information to help you talk to your little ones about bullying. Well, keep up to date with our new episodes here at Tempo in Depth and Station Events by liking us on Facebook. You can friend me at Amy Burkett and like our station page at PBS 39. We'd love your feedback on tonight's show. Switching gears now, we have three special drawings for our studio audience. Sands Casino Resort Bethlehem has donated a $50 gift certificate, good at shops and restaurants and the event center. So first, let's pick a number. Michael, will you help me pick one? Sure. What do we got? We have number 32. Let's see who's our lucky 32 in the audience. Jump up, stand up, be proud. We're front row, we love it, congratulations. Okay, next up, the State Theater in Easton has provided two four packs of tickets to see Golden Dragon Acrobats coming up on Sunday, March 10th. This is an $80 value each. So, Dad, pick one. And we're going to let your son pick the second one because I've got two sets of these. First, we have number 20. Number 20. Who's got number 20? Front row on this side. Excellent. And we have one last one. It's number 12. So number 12, where's our number 12? Are they out there? Are they awake? Oh, he's all the way over here. <laughs> he looks happy. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And we hope to see you in our studio audience very soon. Thanks for your time and good night. feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home. How'd you like to be part of a studio audience for a live taping of Tempo in Depth? Join us at the PBS 39 Public Media and Education Center on the Steel Stacks campus in Bethlehem. For free tickets and information, 610-867-4677, extension 333, or go online to tempo.wlvt.org. I hope to see you soon. Since 1967, John Bronico, a Lehigh Valley native, has offered financial services to area families and businesses. As an independent agent, John works with a variety of companies to find just the right products for your needs. Information at bronicofinancial.com. Solberry School, a co-ed college preparatory boarding and day school.